this is Pastor Bella, Alex Nosage, Lagos, Nigeria. Good evening, God girls. How are we all doing tonight? What is the message that God has for you tonight? Yes, before I teach any message, I ask the Holy Spirit what he wants me to discuss with you. And I had told you a couple of weeks ago that we were led to discuss the women of the Bible, because we're all women on this platform, women all over the world. And there are only two people that can teach you how to be a woman, another woman or God himself. Studying the lives of women who lived centuries ago and getting into their emotions really helps us be better God girls. These are women Mm, back in the day, way back in the day, the various stories, and we've looked at a bunch of them. And from the feedback I'm getting, a whole bunch of you are enjoying it and growing in the Lord. Praise God. But there's also the parables of Jesus. The Holy Spirit said we should be discussing it. And what I love so much about walking with the Holy Spirit, I never know which direction he's going to move in. I never know. I can start up, I can wake up today and not know the message until about 3 p.m. Yeah, he can do that. And it's kind of exciting because I know he will deliver. He will give me a message before the end of the day. I don't just go to any part of the Bible and just pick things up. I ask. In this ministry, God wants all his daughters to come back to him. He wants all his daughters. And women are so important to God. We're so important. We shape the home. We birth the population. We have to be strong. And the problem is many women are broken. And when you're broken, you can't fulfill destiny. But we need to know that we're complete and whole in Christ. And he has empowered us to go out into the world and raise our families in a godly way and be influencers in a godly way. So when we look back at the women who lived back then and we see how they overcame All kinds of instances and various women. But today is a parable day. And this parable is one of my favorites. Because on the surface, I've told you a parable is a story within a story. On the surface, it's talking about women. And we are women. But I'm going to break it down and get deeper into it by the grace and power of God. So we will be discussing the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. The parable of the ten virgins. Yes, that's who we're talking about tonight. And ding, 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 when we hear virgins, what does Pastor Bella want to talk about? Yes, I always need to talk about sexual purity. It's one of the mandates on my life sent by God to this generation to tell you all the importance of sexual purity. So when you see a parable that mentions 10 virgins on the surface, these were 10 women who had never had sex. God is still letting you know that that is absolutely important. Even though the parable goes beyond 10 women who've never had sex. Virginity is very important to God. Virginity is purity. Sex is a covenant that a husband and wife has in marriage that keeps them together. When you have sex outside of marriage, you've created crazy covenants, unlawful covenants outside of marriage, and you are in serious disobedience to God. Virginity is precious to God. And I've, I mean, I've talked about it before that even if you're not, you're not a virgin any longer, some of us have been delivered from fornication and adultery and whatever else. Even if you're not a virgin any longer, your sexual purity is important to God. That means you cannot still be in sexual sin. You cannot. Virginity is purity. The highest form of purity that you can give to God is a life free from sexual sin. So even if you've fallen before, 
get back up tonight and say never, never, never again. I'm going to be celibate until I get married to the husband that God gives to me. And when I get married to this man, I'm going to be faithful to him until death do us part. No adultery in this marriage. No, no, no. Because it is not of God. That's your sexual purity. And your sexual purity is also, it starts from your mind. So it's not just what your body is doing. What are you thinking about? What are you feeding your mind with? Are you feeding your mind with the word of God or are you feeding it with porn? Are you hanging out with God or are you spending time masturbating, touching yourself? That's not sexual purity. Okay, so I'm just reinforcing that a little tonight that when you see a parable of 10 virgins, virginity is important to God. And if you've lost your virginity, sexual purity is important to God. So don't think because you're not a virgin anymore, that means, okay, you're doomed. So you need to keep having sex. No, repent tonight and tell God that you're sorry and ask him to help you flee from fornication as he told us to do in his word. All right, so we have 10 virgins. And why not the parable of 10 women? Why did it say the parable of the 10 virgins? This parable is a call to holiness, righteousness, and sexual purity. Because if you really want to know, uh, break things down, you can't tell me that you are holy and righteous and you're not sexually pure. Sexually purity is part of your holiness and righteousness. So don't tell me you're a Christian and you're fornicating. Then you're not holy and righteous. You're not doing things God's way. You cannot be a righteous woman of God, a child of God, and you're in fornication. You are walking in unrighteousness. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. But when you see a parable of the ten virgins, don't say, oh, virginity is so old-fashioned. It's not old-fashioned to God. You better close those legs and keep them closed. The only man that needs to open those legs of yours is the husband that God has given to you legally from heaven. Until you get a husband, and I said husband, not fiance. Some people are engaged and sleeping around. Hey, he's already mine. It doesn't matter. It matters. It matters because all fornicators will not go to heaven. First Corinthians 6, 9. All adulterers will not go to heaven either. A God girl is eternity minded. We're living for the life after this one. And in order to get to heaven... We need to be living in obedience to God. Holiness, righteousness, sexual purity. You need to have all these if you're a true child of God. So if you've fallen before, get up, repent, and go and sin no more. I don't condemn you. God doesn't condemn you. God wants you to repent. He wants you to repent while you have life in you. Because once you die, there's no more chances. Once you die, you can't tell Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm ready to listen now. Too late. Straight to hell. And hell is eternal. It's not just somewhere you go for a year. Like when you go to jail and say, oh, he committed a crime. She committed a crime. We'll sentence her to five years of jail. No, hell is not five years. Hell is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It doesn't end. It doesn't end. So if any of you are in sexual sin, I keep hammering this because I know. I know that some of you still are. Some of you still are. You need to give that weakness to God. You need to leave that ungodly relationship. You need to go repent before God and tell him that you're sorry and you need his strength to be made perfect in your weakness. You need to tell him because you don't know when you're going to die. And when you die, there's no more chances. You don't know when he's coming back. And that's the importance of this parable tonight. The ten virgins, you can find this story in Matthew chapter 25, starting from verse 1. Then will the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Ten virgins took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Stop. The bridegroom is Jesus. And if you didn't know it before, I'm telling you tonight who the ten virgins are. The church! The church! This is the interpretation of the, of the parable. 
Okay, so don't just read this like a story. The ten virgins are the church. The ten virgins are the church today, the Christians today. Some people, in fact, one lady wanted to argue with me on Facebook that, oh, how can you, uh, the way you write and write and write, you're talking like Christians are going to hell. No Christian can go to hell. I said, which Bible are you reading, woman? Which Bible are you reading? Right here in this parable. Ha, ha, ha. Christians will not make the kingdom of heaven. It's right here in this parable. And if you need Jesus to tell you directly, go read Matthew chapter 7. Go read Matthew chapter 7. Christians will not make heaven. That's why I tell you, some of some Christians, and that's why I tell you all the time, don't follow any Christian. Christians need to wake up. That's why I tell you, don't follow Christians, follow God. There are Christians on the wrong path. There are Christians who will not make heaven. There were five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. This is the church. Back when Christ was talking about his church, 50% of the church, because that's 50%, five, 50% of the church will not make it into heaven. That was back then. What about today's church? What about today's church in this perverse generation? When you see me teaching like this, do you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about souls. We need to wake up and be serious about this holy God that we claim to be serving. You can't tell me you're a child of God and you're just living in sin and doing whatever you want. So what if you have a good voice and you're singing in the choir? It's not about that. Are you living a righteous life? Are you living a righteous life? These were 10 virgins. These were the church. These were 10 Christian girls. But the Lord says five of them were foolish. Today's church, there are a lot of foolish people because they're not, they're not in tune with God. They're not taking him seriously. And right here on this platform, I give you the truth of God's word. It's up to you. I can't force you to heaven, but I'm going to break it down for you so you go back and think about your Christian walk. Are you walking in the right way? Are you walking in the right way? Are you following every other Christian? Are you going to the church that seems to be happening? So many churches right now, they don't have God in it. They've built something for themselves. They've built popularity. You go into some church and you don't even know if you're in the church anymore. You think you're out there in the club. It's so dark. It's all kinds of music. The smoke coming on the altar. And oh, the pastor is dressed out, dressed like a rock musician. And it, I mean, come on. Come on. As much as you want to be approachable to, to reach people who are out in the world, there needs to be a distinct difference. You cannot be like the world in order to evangelize the world. There has to be something different about you. What kind of Christian are you? What kind of Christian are you? Are you a wise virgin or are you a foolish virgin? Let's keep going. The five wise virgins are those who are truly in touch with God. Five were foolish. They're lazy in their approach to God. They take their relationship with him for granted. These are church goers. Going through the motions of Christianity. Not everyone who's in church is born again. Is spirit filled. Is led by the spirit of God. There are a lot of church goers. So you ask yourself tonight. Am I a church goer? Or am I someone who has surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Am I a wise child of God? Or am I a foolish child of God? Am I ready for the coming of the Lord? Verse 3. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. This is the separation of religion and relationship in the church. There is intimacy in a surrendered relationship to God. Verse 3, they took no oil with them. They were not surrendered to the Holy Spirit. He was not a major component in their lives. I mean, who walks around without light at night? Okay, let's go back into the parable. They needed light to see. Who is our light today? The Holy Spirit is our light. He is a light. We cannot make it into heaven without the Holy Spirit. This signifies right here spiritual blindness. You're spiritually blind. You may be going to church, singing in the choir, highly gifted. But are you spiritually alert? Are you led by the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit lights the way for us. If we are in darkness as Christians, we are not seeking Him. The Holy Spirit is there for us all, but it is our responsibility 
to maintain our relationship with him as Christians. The Holy Spirit is there. Once you give your life to Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. You receive him. Are you nurturing your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Do you have oil in your lamp? Are you a Christian that surrendered to God? Do you have the Spirit of God in you? Are you led by the Spirit of God? Are you, or are you just a church goer? Are you just a church? You're just sitting in church, going to church religiously, but does Jesus abide in you? Verse 4, but the wise took oil in their jars with their lamps. The five wise virgins, they did. They had oil. They had their Holy Spirit. The Bible calls them wise because they knew that they were nothing without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He is the helper. He is the guide, the guide and the purifier who keeps us prepared for the coming of the bridegroom. Jesus is coming back. He promised us he's coming back. We cannot get into heaven without the help of the Holy Spirit. He is the oil. He is the Spirit of God. He is the way into heaven. Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father, they are one. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except by me. Who did Jesus leave when he was going up into heaven? He left the Holy Spirit. I'm sending you a helper. He'll keep you in remembrance of me. That's the oil in this parable. There are many Christians today who do not seek the Holy Spirit before they do anything. Dangerous. Let's keep going. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. They all, the whole church, the whole ten virgins, they slumbered and slept. Yes, we have been hearing that Jesus is coming soon. We've been hearing it. I've been hearing it since I was a toddler. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. When is he coming? And it seems like we've been waiting for forever. So many times we've just been waiting, waiting. And it's like, okay, maybe Jesus is not coming today. So let me just go do something. Let me go do something else. These virgins slumbered and slept. The whole church, the whole church was asleep. Okay, so many times we begin to focus on other things that are crucial to the day-to-day -day life. It is important to sleep after a long day in order to be rested. But slumbering is the cautionary word here. Yes, sleep is crucial to our well-being, but what about slumber? Slumber denotes losing focus. You're just, you're not as alert anymore. You're just in slumber. You're not alert. You're not looking out for the bridegroom. You're not looking out for Jesus. You go, you're going to go to that party. I'm talking about church goers. Okay, if you're a foolish virgin in today's age, you're going to be at the club. It's like, oh, yeah, Jesus is coming. Well, not today. I'm going out to party. I'm going out to do whatever. You're not focused on his coming. And we have to be careful. This is, this is a call to everybody. Be careful. Do not let your cares or issues ever remove your focus from Jesus. Slumbering begins that way. When you start, remember I've talked about focusing on your problems so much that you're going to lose focus. You have to keep your eyes on Christ. In the midst of your problem, keep your eyes on Christ. In the midst of the good life, keep your eyes on Christ. Never take your eyes off him because you can miss it. You're going to end up slumbering and sleeping. Jesus must be in the center of everything. Don't push him to the back seat. Don't push Jesus to the back seat. Start out your day with Jesus. Be connected to Jesus. Verse 6 to 10. Let me read it. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, uh, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, No, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go instead to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Jesus is the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom and the church is his bride. As a child of God, you are his bride. And he's coming back for his church. He has promised us that he's coming back for his people. 
All right, he's coming back. He promised us. If we believe this Bible that we're reading and we talk about Adam and Eve, okay, you talking about Adam and Eve, you better be talking about Jesus coming back because everything has a beginning and an ending, right? And Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. So if we say, Jesus, 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 I believe in you, you better believe that Jesus is coming back. And I want you to understand that verse 6 to 10 applied today is instant. So don't just read this parable and get lost. Verse 6 to 10, it is instant. When Jesus returns, there is no time to be scrambling for oil. The rapture is instant. And this is a lesson to us. The rapture is instant. It is instant. There's no time to be running around. Okay, I'm going to look for oil. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, where are you? Um, let me quickly get connected to the Holy Spirit. And then when the trumpet sounds, I'm going to Jesus. No, there's no time. The only time you have is now. First Thessalonians chapter four from 16 to 18. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be cut up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming back. That's the rapture described in this scripture. And one day we're going to take time and really discuss the rapture. It's a long, it's called eschatology. That's like, <laughs> that's a study on its own. It's a long study to talk about Jesus coming back. It's, it's so filled with, you think understanding this parable is easy? Revelation, the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, then tying it all together and looking at the timeline of when Jesus will return. Woo, it's a lot of work. So what I tell people is it's not your business to know when Jesus is coming back. If he's coming back today, that's not your business. Your business is you just better be prepared. It can be today. It can be tomorrow. It can be five years from now. It can be after you're dead and gone. But just be prepared. Just be prepared. And how are you prepared? Having a relationship with him, living for him, reading his word, obeying him, seeking him, day in, day out, taking everything to him. Today we were talking about hair. Tell him, ask him, Lord Jesus, should I put this outfit on? Lord Jesus, what do you think about this? Lead me. Every day I pray to God, anything that is in me that will make me miss your kingdom, take it away. Any sin in my life that is so hard for me to let it go of, whatever is in me, remove the appetite of that sin from me. So some of you who fornicated before, don't tell me it's so hard, it's so hard to stop. Tell God and say, Lord, I don't want to fornicate anymore. I want you to make this sin no longer pleasurable to me. He can do that. He can take that desire away. He can take it away for the window you remain single and when you get married he's going to give you back that desire to enjoy your husband to the fullest God specializes in the impossible so don't tell me because you've been masturbating all your life that you can't stop you can't stop by the grace and power of God because where your strength stops God's strength takes over and it does not finish there's nothing impossible with God there's nothing impossible don't listen to the lies of the enemy get up from that bed and never go back to that bed that bed of sin. Get up right now. Whatever is holding you back and preventing you from being close to God. Whatever is in your life that's making you a foolish virgin in the church. Rise up and wake up from your slumber now. Because time is running out. Time is running out. Your life is running out. Each and every day you live is a day you're closer to the grave. Think about that. You're closer to the grave. Each and every day you live. Take this Jesus Seriously, read his word. When I spend time to teach you, listen, be convicted, repent, and apply in your life. Teach your children the right ways of God. Go out into the world and shine for him. Don't go out there blending. Go out into the world and shine and refuse to be a foolish virgin. A foolish virgin who's disconnected from the Holy Spirit. Who's doing things in a worldly manner. We don't know if we're in the club or we're in the church. We don't know who, who you stand for. You just look so worldly. You have your cleavage out. You have your short mini skirt. You have your hair that's cut in some kind of crazy way. You're just looking crazy. And you say you're a daughter of God. Come on now. Wake up from that level. 
Wake up from it and represent God. Think of him when you dress up. Is he pleased with how you're dressing? Is he pleased with you? Is he pleased with where you go and what you're doing? Are you asking him? Are you seeking him? You got to seek God. He's the only one that can get you into heaven. You can't get into heaven by your own power, your own might. These were 10 virgins. 10 virgins. So if we want to go back to virginity, they were 10 pure women. But five of them, five, five of them were not ready when the bridegroom came. They were not ready when Jesus returned for his bride. You and I are his bride. We have to be ready. You have to make the Holy Spirit your friend. You need to seek him and talk to him and ask him to teach you his ways and purify you. Don't struggle when he's taking the love of the world from you. I haven't listened to secular music since 2015. I haven't. I don't seek it. I told him to take all those things out of me. I'm a music lover. I love music. But I said, if this is what is going to keep me out of your kingdom, please take it away. I've made a decision. I want to make heaven. And Jesus has told me he's the way to heaven. And he's told me that as he's left the earth, he's left his spirit to assist me to make it into heaven. Uh, you think I'm just going to sit around with all this information and just be doing whatever and being a churchgoer? Those days are gone. I'm alive in Christ. I live for him and I will die for him so I can spend eternity with him. Start thinking like that because 10 virgins, 50% were not ready when the bridegroom came. In today's church is more than 50%. When you look at today's church, I know the issues I'm dealing with counseling people who've been in church for several years. It's not you being in church. It's Jesus in you. It's the power of God in you. You're going to church and you're still living in such sin? You're going to church and you're still a baby Christian? You need to wake up. It is serious. Hell is real. Jesus is coming back. And when he returns and he takes his bride, the world will be dealing with tribulation. By the grace of God, if Jesus comes back in my lifetime, Pastor Bella will not be left behind. Because what comes after is the most terrifying era this world has ever seen. The years of tribulation. It's terrible. It's a terrible time coming. You better be close to God and seek him each and every day and ask for his grace grace and mercy because the rapture is not something you want to miss. The rapture is not something you want to miss. Going to heaven is not something you want to miss. You have to make that sacrifice tonight and say, I will not be a foolish virgin. I will not be a church goer. I will not just be a religious God girl. I'm going to be a God girl who's really a God girl. Who's in relationship with my God? I'm in love with him. I live for him. I obey him. I fear him. I'll raise my children in his ways. I will stand for him. I will marry a godly man if I'm not married yet. And if I'm not married to a godly man, I will stay on my knees and pray that man to the kingdom of God. Because all things are possible in the name of Jesus. Someone has to stand in the gap. It's never too late while you are alive. Some of you are in hopeless marriages. It's not your job to give up on the man. You better pray for him. Better pray for your prodigal. You better pray for your prodigal husband and your prodigal children. Because Jesus is coming back. And when you get to heaven, you want to make sure your family is complete. You don't want to get to heaven and your children are not in heaven with you. Or your husband is not in heaven with you. There's no marriage in heaven, but please, we should still be able to know each other. We should still be able to know. You should be able to understand that this was your husband while you were on earth, even if in heaven you're not married. This was your child while you were on earth, because in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, they knew each other, even though both were now in eternity. They still remembered each other. So when you get to heaven, you want to make sure that your family is there with you. So if your family is not in Christ right now, you better pray, pray hard that God visits them and they give their lives before it's too late. And you, you better make sure you sit up, take Jesus seriously because he's coming back. He's coming back for a virgin bride without wrinkle or spot. Read Ephesians chapter five. He's coming back for a bride, a virgin bride, a bride of purity, holiness, righteousness, a bride who's so into him. And not into this world. So you need to sit up. You need to sit up. Be prepared and be yielded to God. Now is the time to wake up and repent. 
Because when the trumpet sounds, it is only those who are prepared and who have yielded to Jesus that will make it. They will make it in to the kingdom of heaven. So in verse 10, while these virgins went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Verse 11. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, watch, for you know neither the day nor the hour. For Jesus to tell you that he doesn't know you. That is the most devastating thing he can ever tell you. That's the most devastating thing. Don't ever let Jesus say he doesn't know you. Don't be that Christian that when you get to heaven, he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Matthew 7, 22, 23. Read that chapter and see. What about Matthew 24? Matthew 24, to discuss the rapture, that's a, that's a chapter that in itself discusses the coming of the Lord and everything that's going to start happening. So we will discuss it when it is time to discuss and really go into eschatology and how to prepare for the return of God. I'm looking for the reference in, ah, yeah, Matthew 24 from verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Jesus. For as in the days that were before the flood, They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until that day when Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus is telling us to be spiritually alert. He is coming. He is coming back. He's coming back. And the whole world is living like in the days of Noah. They're marrying, having fun, doing whatever. They're not watching the times. They're not watching the end times and how things are getting crazy all over the world. They're not watching. They're not alert that Jesus is coming back any day now. Jesus is coming back. Don't doubt it. He's coming back. Be prepared. Be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Stop loving this world and just love Jesus and ask him to prepare you because you don't want to be that foolish virgin that's left behind where Jesus said he doesn't know even though you've been living in church and singing in church and serving in church for 30 years. You don't want to get to heaven and Jesus says he doesn't know you. That's if you go via death. But with the rapture, he's just going to come take his five wise virgins. He's going to come take his true church that lived for him in obedience to him. We have to make sure we don't slumber and sleep. This is a cautionary parable to us. We have to be careful because there's so many things that are taking our focus from God. And problems do that. Trials do that. But when you're in a trial, please go closer to God. Because they actually bring you closer to God. If you're led by the Spirit of God, when your life is so hard, stay close to God. Don't run away from Him. Because He's the source. He's your provider. If you don't have any money in your pocket, it's painful, it's scary. But you tell God all about it. He will make a way. He will make a way where there's no way. He's done it over and over and over again. That's why there's a song that says, Waymaker. God makes ways. Don Moen. (laughs) God will make a way. God will make a way. He will. Take your problems to God. Don't let anything on this earth overwhelm you that you shift your focus from God. That's what the enemy wants. That's what he wants. These virgins slumbered and slept, but the problem began before that. They had no oil in their lamps. Please make sure you have the Holy Spirit. Please make sure you're reading this word and applying this word in your life. Please make sure you're taking Jesus seriously because he's coming back. And if you die before he comes back, he can still look at you at heaven's gates and say, I don't know you because you chose not to know him while you were on earth. You chose not to know the Holy Spirit and have him as your friend and helper and listen to him when he tells you, you don't need to be doing that. You don't need to go to this place. You don't need to have this friend in your life. You don't need to be in this relationship because it doesn't glorify me. Listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. He is guiding you. He's purifying you. He's preparing you for heaven. You cannot get to heaven without the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot. The oil these foolish virgins did not have was the Holy Spirit. It's a clear warning to us. Have the Holy Spirit as a friend. He's in you once you surrender your life to God. Talk to him when you're praying to God. 
address the Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for being my friend and my guide, for waking me up this morning. Minister to me, guide me, purify me. Have mercy upon me. Show me the way. I seek to live for you. Prepare me for when you're coming. Deliver me from all evil. He's there. And he will start to reveal great mysteries to you. The Holy Spirit is so sweet. He's so gentle. He's so kind. The Spirit of God is the essence of God. The Spirit of God is the essence. He's right here. You have God right here with you. Oh, God is good. He loves you. I love you. I keep it real when I teach because I'm telling you, there's no day that passes that I don't think of my death. There's no day. I'm like, whoo, because death is so instant. You never know when it's coming unless you have a terminal illness. And even if you have a terminal illness and the doctor tells you you have three months to live, they can't give you the exact day you're going to die. So death is, it, it's unexpected. It's sudden. Am I in good standing with you each and every day? Am I in good standing? If I die right now, have I done what you've sent me to do? Am I living in obedience? Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Reveal yourself to me and help me to walk in your ways till the day I die. I've made a vow to God and I've told him, I said, anything, anything. Lord, I, I, I choose to live for you. I've, I choose to obey you till I die. But if at any point I want to take my eyes off of you and backslide because of something that seems so sweet in this world. Please kill me and take me out. It's that serious, y'all. I don't want to go to hell for nothing. And so many Christians are on the pathway to hell. That's why I teach the way I do. I teach with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and all my strength. Because when I'm teaching you all, I'm seeing souls. I'm seeing souls. You all are souls. You are souls. Your souls. And I'm praying that God touches you with these words. And if any of you are in error, you wake up and live, live for him. Surrender your lives to him. Please wake up and repent from a life of sin, a life of casual spirituality. Repent and ask Jesus to come into your life for real. Give him access to all the rooms in your heart. All those impurities in you, give it to him to take it out, to cleanse you. From everything. That pornography stash. Throw it away. Those masturbation sex toys. Throw it away. Those useless chats in your phone. Throw it away. Delete it. Those people that you're chatting with on Facebook. And sex chatting with them. And doing whatever stuff. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. The only man you need right now is Jesus. Until he gives you the man that he has for you. Don't get on your back and open your legs for men because you're looking for love. God is love. And your purity, your sexual purity is important to him. You can't tell me you're a holy and righteous child of God and you're messing around in the world and sleeping around. You cannot be holy and righteous if you're a fornicator or an adulterer. And that's what the enemy is using to send the church to hell. A lot of people in church are sleeping around. And because other Christians are doing it, you think it's okay. It's not okay. Pastor Bell is going to tell you the truth. It's not okay. Because I don't preach just a minuscule part of the word of God. I teach a balanced diet of this word. It's time to wake up and stop being naughty and doing naughty things. Time to wake up. I don't care if the man sings in the choir and he has the best voice. If he's trying to touch you down there, you better step away from him and pray for his soul. Because the devil is in him. I don't care if it's a pastor that's hollering at you. I don't care. Because there are wolves in sheep's clothing. A pastor is supposed to be a shepherd. A pastor is not someone that's supposed to be calling you up and sleeping with you. Some of you have been taken advantage of by your pastors. All that better stop tonight. If God is in a man, he will not lead you astray. The word of God says by their fruit you shall know them. There are men in church who have the fruit of the devil. Any man that's trying to pull your skirts down and have sex with you does not have God in him. That's a sign that you better run. And if you're a God girl, you better run from the devil. You better run. And guard your sexual purity. Guard your walk with God. And get 
rid of anything that will put you on the pathway to hell. Stand up for Jesus in your career. Stand up for Jesus in your school. Stand up for Jesus in your home as a wife and as a mom. Stand up for Jesus as a daughter in your family. Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Because time is running out. You don't know when you're going to die and you don't know when the trumpet is going to sound, but I pray that you will be ready on that day because what's coming after is the worst thing that the world has ever seen. We think we've had it rough. Uh uh. There's nothing as rough as when the rapture of the church takes place. What's left over is, <laughs> it's such darkness. It's such a terrible time. It's so bad that some pastors don't even want to preach about it. But me, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm going to give it to you, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If you don't stand up for God, if you don't live for God, you're on the pathway to hell. So you better repent and do things His way. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. And He does not play. He does not play. What He says, He will do. And if He tells you that there's heaven and there's hell, you better believe Him. And if He tells you, if He tells you that if you don't obey me, and you commit this sin or that sin or this sin, and you're going to hell, you better believe him. You better believe him because he has your life in his hands. Be serious with God and he will be serious with you. God loves you. This is Pastor Bella, Alex Nosagi, Lagos, Nigeria, Ultimate God Girl. God bless you.